If you're anything like me, or you grew up in the American education system, it's likely that your only exposure to the novella was Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea. And on a less universal note, some of you likely find Hemingway extraordinarily boring. I know that's my experience, and for a very long time, I pretty much avoided the novella because of it. That is, I feel, a grave disservice to the novella as a literary format. And this week's video is going to rectify that and show you that the novella can be something fun. Hello everyone, welcome to the Book Cafe. If you're a returning visitor, you know what we do. And if you're new here, welcome to your first review and consider subscribing to the channel. Today, on my continuing quest to prove that fantasy fiction can be high literature, we're going to talk about my next Collect Every Edition. As I mentioned in the cold open, I was not particularly a fan of novellas for a very long time, mainly because my only experience with them was Ernest Hemingway, who I find profoundly boring. Feel free to argue with me in the comments, but that's, that's, that's an opinion. I've reviewed several Brandon Sanderson works already, some of which got good reviews, some of which did not. Many returning viewers will likely know that I am quite the fan. As a result, over the past few years, I have tracked down and read every single thing the man has produced, including several unpublished manuscripts that are quite good. But what I'm here today to talk about is one of my top ten favorite books of all time, his novella The Emperor's Soul. The plot of the book is very basic. The Emperor of the Rose Empire has been assassinated but the assassins didn't quite manage to finish the job. His body is alive, but his mind and soul are not. He's in a coma from which he will never awaken. The main character is a soul forger, an artist who is capable of altering the histories of objects uh, to make them something different than what they are. Her practice is illegal. However, the emperor's primary advisor desperately needs the man alive in order to prevent a governmental collapse. And in order to bring him back, arrest the main character, Shy, in order to force her to make use of her abilities to bring, the, the, to bring the Emperor back. It's a very simple plot with a great deal of nuance because of one very simple fact. In order for the magic to work, the history of the thing has to be very close to the original. And the more complex something is, the harder it is to make. So in order to make a complete person from scratch, Shai has to know everything about the man she's trying to resurrect. And what follows is one of the deepest character explorations in fiction between a criminal, a dead emperor, and a man who can stand neither of them, but desperately needs them both. Now when it comes to my fantasy, I am an absolute sucker for three things. Fantasy inspired by Asian cultures, deep and complex characters, and anything talking about the true nature of art. And the Emperor's soul hits every one of those buttons. The magic and the culture is based around uh, Sanderson's time in Taiwan and Korea. And the magic is based on this thing. It's called the Tojang. I am not pronouncing it right. Uh, but it's how Taiwanese artists sign their work. If I'm wrong on that, feel free to correct me. The entire novella is a study on the character of Emperor Ashravan and all of the, the history and the decisions that led from him as a boy to how he became emperor and his true feelings on the subject, all of his secrets, all of the, like the, the diary that no one knows about, the poetry that he writes, the fact that he truly, truly hates being emperor and never really wanted it, but he can't really trust anyone else to have the position. He resents his best friend for putting him in that position. It's deep and fascinating character development over the course of less than 100 pages. And when it comes to the forging itself, which is the magic, what is the truth of a thing? What is, what is the true history of an object? And if you change it, to something more beautiful, is it still the same object, and is it right to do so? The moment when Emperor Ashravan wakes up and realizes that he is both artificial and still abundantly human is one of the most beautiful paragraphs, two paragraphs really, I have ever read. And it's such a short amount of time for such a huge 
impact. I mean, going back to Hemingway, it's it's like the the six word short story, baby shoes for sale never worn. So few words, such a huge emotional impact. The Emperor's Soul is without a doubt a collect every edition. It is one of my favorite books ever. It's been on every top ten list I've ever made. You can absolutely see why it won the Hugo Award for Best Novella. And however you manage to get your hands on this, you absolutely should. It will change your view of fantasy and the novella forever. Have you read The Emperor's Soul? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to show up by clicking on the like button. Click here to subscribe for more videos like this, and here to watch more videos from the Book Cafe. Next week I will be reviewing City of Lies by Sam Hawk, so I will see everyone on Saturday, and until then, read good fantasy.